Hey teachers, summertime is finally here. The summer, 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 summer. summer. You have worked so hard this school year, so now what can you do to make the most of your time off? In this video, I'm gonna share five easy things that you can do so that you can be well rested and ready to teach a new group of students this fall. Now, before I share all of my summertime tips with you, I just wanna ask if you could take a moment to like this video and subscribe to my channel. I would greatly appreciate it. We produce all of the content here on my channel for free and taking the time to like and subscribe allows us to continue producing free content for all of you. So now that that's over with, let's get straight into it. Now, usually when I make any sort of list video, I save the best or the most important thing for last. But in this video, I'm gonna take the opposite approach. I'm going to share the most important thing that you should be doing this summer first. So here it is. The most important thing that you should do this summer is rest. You have just spent the past 10 months prioritizing your students over most other things, including yourself, and you've been working really long hours. Now is the time to take some time for you. And what rest looks like is going to look a little bit different for everybody. For me, it's gonna look like taking a vacation with my husband, getting outside and biking and hiking, and watching lots of Disney Plus with Penny Lane right here. For you, rest may look entirely different. The most important thing is that you remember you can't help others if you're not helping yourself first, and that includes helping your students. So take some time for yourself this summer. Rest, do things you enjoy doing, and spend time with the people that you love. All right, Penny Lane had to go off and enjoy her summer and take a nap. She has had enough of being in this video. But having said everything that I just said, I am a huge believer in taking vacations and truly taking breaks from work so that when you do go back to work, you can be strong. But I have found that there's a lot of little things that you can do that aren't time consuming, that aren't exhausting, that aren't mentally demanding, that will make your life so much easier when you do go back to school in the fall. Taking the time to do some of these little things over the summer break can truly help just your time and your overall mental health when it is time to go back to work. Now, one of the things that I like to do in the summertime is find good professional development to attend. We all know that in teaching, things are changing all the time. There's new techniques, there's new strategies, there's new forms of technology. And a lot of times during the school year, I'll hear about a new teaching strategy or I'll hear about a new form of technology to implement in the classroom but I really don't have time to research those things more, to learn how to use something and then teach my students how to use it too. So what I have found is the summertime is a great time to find something that I've been wanting to learn more about and actually take the time to learn it. So oftentimes what I'll do is I'll find a one or two day workshop or I'll sign up for an online course, something that's not super time consuming or allows me to work at my own pace, but it gives me some new practical knowledge that I can take back to my classroom in the fall. And I don't know about you, but whenever I do implement a new strategy or a new form of technology, I do things a little bit different and change it up. It makes me feel a little refreshed and I think it makes things more fun for the students too. And if you happen to be a Virginia teacher watching this video, I want to let you know that my team and I, we create a free video training series for teachers every single summer. We make sure these videos are short and to the point so that you can get valuable information and then get back to enjoying your summer vacation. All of our video training series have to do with the SOLs, uh, learning new SOLs, resources that you can use to teach the SOLs, ways to implement the SOLs in your classroom, but we're actually getting ready to release this summer's video training series very, very soon. So if you are not already signed up for our Virginia Teacher Newsletter, it is linked down in the description below, and I highly recommend that you sign up for that because that is how we notify people when those free training series 
are available. Now I have one last thing I wanna say about professional development and then we'll move on to the next thing. But I also want to encourage you to take some time this summer to check out when it's time to renew your teaching license and figure out how many recertification points you need between now and then. And summertime may be a good time to start working those points in. And I share this with you from my own mistakes. Uh, the last time I had to renew my teaching license, I waited until the last minute to do it and I was taking like three online courses in the middle of the school year and it was just not fun at all. It was several weeks of just working from the crack of dawn till it was time to go to bed, trying to get those points in and do my job at the same time. So learn from my mistakes and I highly recommend that if you can squeeze those points in in the summer so that way you don't have to worry about it in the school year, go ahead and do that. It will make your life so much easier later on. Another thing that you can do that will make your life so much easier once the school year rolls around is take some time to organize your files and your teaching resources. I know throughout the school year things can get kind of out of place and messy and now's the time to get organized again. Now I am one of those people who loves to organize things. It makes me happy, it brings me peace, it brings me joy when I am organizing things and I actually say whenever the world around me is cluttered and unorganized, I feel like my brain is really cluttered and unorganized too. So over the years, I've developed systems for organizing my physical teaching resources, such as worksheets and manipulatives, things like that and for organizing my digital teaching files. And I've actually created videos for both of these where I show you these systems. They're actually here on this YouTube channel. I will link them both down in the description below. But if you're not really sure the best way for organizing and you wanna check out what systems I'm using, you can see how I organize all of my physical teaching resources like worksheets, and you can see how I organize all of my digital files on the computer. Now the great thing about organizing during the summer is that it's so easy to do, especially if you use my systems, that you can have the TV on, you can have a movie on, and you can be organizing at the exact same time. So it's kind of a little way that you can relax and get things done at exactly the same time. Another easy thing that you can do while you're watching TV or watching a movie is work on converting some of your PDF resources into digital resources. Even though most school districts have moved back to in-person learning, keep in mind that digital is here to stay. We are going to be seeing more and more technology worked into the classroom. We're gonna be seeing more and more expectations to use technology in the classroom. So taking some time to convert some of those resources now will save you a lot of time during the school year. Now, last summer I actually went through, I converted all of my math, science, US history, and Virginia studies task cards into self-checking digital task cards inside of Google Forms. And taking the time to do that during my summer made my life so much easier throughout the school year. And the great thing was I did, I had the TV on while I was converting all of these things on my laptop. Now, if you're thinking this is something that you would be interested in doing this summer, but you're not really sure how to go about converting your resources to digital, I have got you covered here on this channel. We've got lots of videos here about creating digital resources. We've got lots of videos about using technology in the classroom. And I'm going to specifically link two videos down in the description that I think you might be interested in. Those videos have to do with converting your PDF task cards to self-checking digital task cards like I did. And also another video about converting your PDF worksheets into interactive worksheets inside of Google Slides. So make sure to check those out if you're interested in converting to digital, but you're not really sure how. All right, it looks like Miss Penny Lane decided to join us for the fifth and final tip in this video. And the fifth tip I have for you is to go ahead and plan out your first week of school. Now, typically the first week of school is not academic. During this time, you're gonna be establishing your rules and your expectations for the school year. You're gonna be getting your routines and systems in place and training your students and you're going to be building relationships and establishing a classroom community. So taking the time to plan out those first week of school activities that have to do with establishing expectations and building your classroom community 
it's going to make it so that when you do go back for your teacher work days, hopefully you get a whole week. When you do go back for that, you can actually spend it focusing on some of the other things that are gonna be really important for that school year, like your standards, like your curriculum, planning out your academic instruction, getting your classroom together. And you're not going to have to worry about planning out those community building games. You're not gonna to have to worry about how am I gonna present the rules this school year because you're gonna have that stuff already done. Now the way that I like to think about the first week of school every summer is I read the book the first six weeks of school. This is one of my favorite teaching books. It never gets old for me. I think the information is so valuable and it's so good to get a refresher on this every single summer. But basically this book shares how you establish expectations with your students and build relationships over the first six weeks of school. And it has a lot of great games and activities that you can do with students. So I will actually start reading this early in the summer and just slowly go through it. And as I'm going through it, I'm making a list of ideas and activities that I wanna use during that first week of school. So it makes it very easy just to plan that out. All right, so there you have it. Those are five easy, easy things that you can do this summer so that way you're taking time for you, you're getting that rest that you so much deserve, and then you can also be just doing some little things to make your life much easier once the school year rolls back around. But I would love to hear from you. What are you doing this summer? Leave comments down below. I wanna hear all about your summer break plans, even if it's just sitting at home and laying on the couch all summer, I wanna hear about it. So let me know down in the comments, and until next time, happy teaching.